Hi folks, hope everybody's okay, it's good to see you. This is my first broadcast for a long, long time on Athanasius TV. I used to be on over at Atheist Examine and I'm having a new direction and a new way forward and I'm going to be concentrating more on the preaching of the word. Yes I am and hope everybody's okay, my name's Jay, it's good to see you. <coughs> and um, I'm going to report to you what's been happening today and um, I'm going to put uh, a list of my blogs um, and various places where you can go and uh, watch uh, my online live lectures and Bible studies and also um, we'll be uh, sharing with you blogs and things and places where I'll be writing and producing a lot of stuff if you're interested in Bible teaching and things about Christianity. Um, those who no don't know me, my name is Jay. I'm a Manchester lad and um, preacher of the gospel and uh, principally doing uh, evangelism in Manchester and uh, really enjoying it and so I'm going to share with you today what has happened <coughs> um, yeah so in the next few weeks few days and weeks ahead you're going to be seeing me doing a lot of Bible teaching and a lot of um, writing a lot of lecturing and if you're interested in that um, you're welcome to come and listen in. My qualifications for doing all this, I've had a lot of experience in preaching in all sorts of churches, uh, Methodist, Baptist, Evangelical. I have a degree in theology, uh, accredited from Manchester University. Uh, I've been ordained as a minister of the gospel. And, um, you know, I, I am well qualified to teach the Bible so you're in safe hands I don't teach any error I just teach the pure Word of God so if you want the pure Word of God then I'm the man for you to come uh, I'm not going to be doing a lot of apologetics I will do some and I will post them on other channels from time to time if you want to know what I'm thinking what I'm, what I'm aiming at what I'm doing this is the channel to come this is the base I have another main base on Zwema 100, but anything I do on here, I'll put on there. So this is where you're going to see it first, okay? And basically, for the next couple of years, I'm just going to be doing the thing that I enjoy doing the most, and that's teaching the Word of God. Um, so I hope you enjoy it, and uh, it's good to have you on board. Um, so... I'm just going to share with you, excuse me, I'm a bit tired, <clears throat> I'm just going to share with you um, what's been happening today. I started the day um, listening to uh, a preaching video by John MacArthur. Uh, he was in England, Sco uh, in, he was in Scotland conference a few years ago. And um, I'll just take this off of it, it's just, uh, sorry about that. Just had a cold, and um, I've had this out while I've been out during the day, and just trying to keep warm. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, yeah. So, those who don't know, uh, I'll put a link to his channel. I do enjoy John MacArthur's ministry. I don't agree with everything John MacArthur says, but if you want Bible teaching, sorry about this. If you want Bible teaching, John MacArthur is a really good place to go. Um, I heartily recommend uh, his channel, uh, his uh, website. Anyhow, I listened to John MacArthur and I found it really encouraging. Um, really, really encouraging about church. He was talking about the nature of the church and he was saying like, you know, there's so many feeler friendly churches. Like I go to a main church in Manchester and it's full of young people, like a thousand young people, and it's geared to the culture, and it's geared to get
getting down to people's level. But the whole problem is there's there's a loss of theology, there's a loss of, loss of Bible teaching, a lot a loss of depth. And John MacArthur was talking about the need to get back to what the Bible teaches about church. And um, you know, and he, and what <clears throat> what really encouraged me, I think, whatever, I think, is it in Matthew or Mark? I'll just see if it's in Mark. What really encouraged me um, is the text where it says, I will build my church. Uh, that really, really encouraged me today. Uh, I just found it really helpful. Excuse me. If I sniffle, forgive me. I think it's in Matthew 16. Anyhow. Yeah, it's uh, Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 onwards. It says, When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, Who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of John, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades, Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loose, loosed in heaven. And he warned his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. Now, just a little background there. I mean, a lot of Catholic people would say that that's, uh, that's saying that that is pointing to the Catholic Pope, that, the, that when Christ says, on this rock I build my church, uh, that it's referring to the Pope. Well, I don't, I don't take that view. I think when Jesus Christ says, our Lord says, on this rock, I build my church. I believe that He's saying on the confession that Christ is the Son of God. That's the rock. Peter's appointed to proclaim that rock. Okay. So I don't think it's saying that Peter's the Pope, and then everybody else after Peter is appointed a Pope has that authority and that's the rock but what really encouraged me today is those words where it said and on this rock I will build my church and it, it really encouraged me that because I don't know about you I'm a, I'm a kind of really intense kind of guy and you know I, I like I like to pray and ask God to rend the heavens and come down and do great powerful things by his Holy Spirit. And sometimes you get discouraged because you don't see this revival, this rending of the heavens and things like that. And there seems to be a lot of error, there seems to be a lot of problems in churches and things like that. And then we have our own personal problems and um, national issues in nations and things and sometimes it can get quite discouraging and and when when you're doing mission or when you're doing christian work in some kind of way it can get quite discouraging sometimes but what that text tells me what what it spoke to me today impacted me it was saying jay relax i will build my church the lord's going to build his church and i thought about that and i thought well this promise was given over 2,000, nearly about 2,000 years ago. And Christ has kept his promise. You know, I was listening. I've, had, I've been so blessed recently. Someone sent me a load of DVDs, Bible teaching DVDs. And I've been so blessed because some of them have been about the history of the church. And uh, one DVD was, was telling the story of the Al Albigenses. These were like 
kind of Christians in living in the the hills and the valleys of the centre of Italy, you know, in the time of the Middle Ages. And the Catholic Church persecuted these Christians, these Albigenses, and killing them and slaughtering them. Even I was even told by someone who visited the area that the Catholic people who were persecuting these Albigenses would actually get their babies and throw them over the hills. And it it struck me that for hundreds of years that these Albigenses were getting persecuted, being killed, and yet they still preached the gospel. And the church still grew and God still blessed. And 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 I, and and the church continues to grow and the Lord continues to honour his word. I will build my church. And John MacArthur was saying about that and it really encouraged me. So we don't have to try and be trendy. We don't have to try and be slick and like some churches do and have the right methodology or whatever. We, we don't have to keep striving. We, we just have to relax and let the Holy Spirit do His work as we communicate the gospel and share the word of God the power of God's going to do the work God's going to do the work God's going to do his work he's doing his work and he's building his church and no devil no demons no army no nation nobody nobody is going to stop God building his church so if you're a pastor today and you're you're preaching away in your church and it seems tiring and it seems discouraging and it seems as if you're not getting anywhere and it seems as if you're striving. I want you to do something. I want you to go and sit down on a nice chair. Make yourself a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and put your feet up and put some chill out music. When you get your upper Bible, and I want you to get that passage out, if you would, please. You don't have to. But get Matthew 16, and meditate tonight, or in the next day or two, whenever you listen to this video. Meditate on Matthew 16, verse 13 to 20. And meditate on, I will build my church. And, and... And just think about it. That you have the might of God who created the universe, who created the, the, the nations, who created the sun, the moon, the stars, give you a promise. I will build my church. And God is going to build his church. Nothing is going to stop God building his church and he's going to build it. What you've got to do as a pastor, or as a believer in your church, is make yourself available to God and say, Lord, I'm here. This is what I'm beginning to do each day. I'm beginning to say, Lord, I'm here. I give you my heart, mind, money, time. I give you everything that I am today. This is yours. What do you want me to do? And make yourself available to God. And then let Him work. His works through you. And don't worry about the church. God will build his church. And the gates of hell will not prevail. Oh, what an encouragement. What a blessing today that was to be. What a blessing, brothers and sisters, that we are on the winning side. And we know the winning side in the book of Revelation. So, so that's how I started my day. Meditating on that word was a blessing to me, folks. So what else was there? <coughs> Excuse me, i got a sniffly nose. What else was there? Um, well, I went into town and I took my table. I got a table. And uh, I'll show you. I've got it on here. 
Um, I'll show you. I'm trying to get get these up on online, but um, I haven't got them at the moment. I, I can't see to get them online at the moment, but I'll I'll show you. Okay, so you know. Here we go, folks. There we are. That's that's the table. Okay, I'll give you another clip. That just gives you an idea. And I went out today. And I was a bit late. I've not been well all week. I've been, the cold came back this week, you know. And um, knocked me back, so I've not been out really. Um, but I got out today, and I, I went out a bit late. I got in town. I got the ta put the table out. And sometimes it's on uh, Piccadilly Garden side of Manchester, and then sometimes under the Arndale. And I put the table out, and I just felt such joy, such such peace, you know. And then within about ten minutes, all the other street preachers gathered round, you know, and we were working together. There's like about eight, five or six street preachers that day today. They do their own thing, and but if there's something to gather around, like a table or or some um, preaching um, platform or something, they'll come down. So we all gathered and encouraged each other, and it was great working together. And uh, we had some great conversations. That within about 15, 20 minutes, there was about uh, I don't know about five or six Chinese girls from Birmingham uh, came round and. Some of uh, the street preachers were witnessing to them. Um, had quite a few young people come to the table, asking questions um, about Christianity and stuff. There was a Satanist, a uh, young Satanist come up to me, and a couple of drunks who come up to me, uh, trying to argue with me, um, and I was able to just share the gospel. So we had some really, really good conversations. Um, and it's been good because I keep meeting people, uh, and it, you know, and it's building that relationship up with people. Then people begin to see that you really care, you know, and, and stuff. So that's been really, really good. Uh, so I've just had a wonderful day, you know. And then I had a brother who's a street preacher, uh, brought him back home, uh, give him a bit of tea, and then took him took him home, and he gave me a big 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 massive bag of fair trade tea I mean it's about that big massive man it's going to last months um, and it's just been a wonderful day you know and I'm in contact with my old uh, college seminary friend you know and we're praying together and you know things are just it's just just the days of are just so happy, you know, so so blessed, so encouraged. Um, so that's where what's been happening today. Um, uh, the guy who uh, come back, who's street preacher, um, elderly guy who came back from Manchester to the house for uh, some food, uh, made him had a bit of tea with him. Uh, he left me with this as well. And uh, that's a fire with a log in it, and that's log on its own. And he was just saying how we need each other. We need to be, if we're in the fire, we're all warm together. But if we're out on our own, we get cold. You know, and we need to be with the Lord's people. We need to be encouraging each other. We need unity in the brethren. You know. And the other thing that's that really, really is disturbing at the moment, which I find really disturbing amongst the Lord's people, 
is there seems to be a lack of teaching, you know, a lack of Bible teaching. People need good Bible teaching. Um, and I'm just amazed at the moment at the lack of balance uh, amongst Bible teachers. Um, so that that's something that, that's on my mind. Um, <clears throat> The other thing as well, um, just get that, just get this, uh, a guy asked me, a uh, Christian guy, sorry, Christian guy asked me about whether the book of Revelation was um, the word of God, okay, and I think it's, sorry, I, I prefer, um, I prefer the old King James, but if you don't like the old King James, I'm sorry, I've got the NIV there, but I'll just use this. Sometimes I'll use the NIV, but I prefer the King James, really. Uh, but if if you find the Old English, I'll I'll use a, a more modern translation for you. Just let me know on that one what you think, okay? <coughs> Anyhow. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. 2 Timothy 3.16 it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So let's just look at that. It says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now the guy, the person asked me, and said, said to me, I believe they're a believer, but they, they asked me the question, is the book of Revelation the word of God? Because they felt studying the book of Revelation was basically... Um, very difficult to understand and so because of that he doubted whether it was the word of God now it says here all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for proof for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness so the word of God is is quite clear that the Bible is the word of God it's inspired of God now he said to me yeah, but that text is all about the Old Testament. They didn't have the New Testament. But that text is on about any passage of Scripture that claims to be the Word of God is the Word of God. Um, now, he said, he said to me, well, I've done translations, uh, linguistic translations, and I'm telling you that there doesn't seem to be any similarity between the book of Revelation and the rest of the writings of John. And I said to him, well, that's an argument of authority. You can say you're an expert, but until you put some evidence on the table, I'm not going to believe it. You've got to put evidence on the table. Now, I've done studies at seminary, okay, at theological seminary. He didn't know this. So I know being at theological seminary that he was talking, he was talking nonsense. And I said, well, if you take the key words of the Gospel of John, you know, and follow them and see if they're in uh, the book of Revelation, you'll see a similarity of style. And he, he wouldn't have it, you see. He said, no, you've got to know the Greek and all that. Whenever people talk like that, then you've got to just make sure, you've got to realise that, you know, not to be intimidated by people like that. Because even if they knew the most Greek in the world, a real top-notch Greek scholar will tell you that Greek, even if you're a top-notch Greek scholar, there's always loads to learn about it because it's it's not as easy to nail down as as people who are not top-notch scholars think. All right. So basically, um, 
I think the guy was probably just bluffing, really, um, about being some kind of expert. Because if he was, he could have just quoted something in Greek or Hebrew or something like that. Um, the point is that he's a brother in Christ, a doubt in the book of Revelation is the word of God. And if you're a if you're a believer and you doubt something in the Word of God, then you need to get it sorted. You need to work on it and think about it and pray about it and get it sorted. To live with the doubt about a part of Scripture is going to bring you is going to bring destruction in your own life and destruction in other people's lives. Because if you spread that doubt, then they're going to start doubting, and it's like it's like Satan putting doubt into Eve and then Eve put doubt into Adam. So you've got to nip it in the bud. And the way to nip it in the bud is pray about the question, study about the question, ask people who know about the question, and then work through it and God will show you the answer. Okay, But you, you need to get that answer if that doubt is there about some portion of scripture. Now... Um, what can I say I offered this person to study with them and to give them some Bible studies and to study with them and they refused point blank so to me that's not being genuine if you really have a question and you have a real doubt then you really really should want to study with people who can help you but he didn't want to study and it, I, I don't think it because he didn't want to study with me he just he wanted to throw these doubts out, but he didn't want to get to the bottom of them and work them through. So, someone like that, they need to be more genuine about really seeking the Lord about these issues. But if you have a real doubt about some portion of scripture, then the best way to deal with it is pray. Ask the Lord to answer the doubt. Study the passage, or study whatever it is. And then ask other pastors or other people who are older and more mature than you in the faith. And you, I'm gu you guarantee that, that your answer will be given. Hold on. I, I, it's happened to me thousands of times where I've hit something which has caused me to doubt. Okay? It might be a question on philosophy. It might be a question about the Bible or something. But then I've looked into it, I've studied it, prayed about it, I've asked other people, looked at what scholars say, prayed to the Lord, and the Lord answers and deals with my questions every time, and has done. And that's how the great saints dealt with their issues when they struggled, okay? Like Charles Wesley, uh, John Wesley is an example. So in other words, don't throw the baby without out of the bath water. You know the Bible's the Word of God, but just because you hit one problem that makes you doubt doesn't mean to say you should throw the whole thing out hold on to the word of God but take your doubt and begin to pray about it and take the scriptures and study the scriptures and whatever issue it is and whatever stuff you can get on that issue and ask people who are more mature okay um, so on the book of Revelation uh, I haven't studied it tonight, but let's just see. This is a... This is just the historical background of the book of Revelation. And I'll put some resources... I'll put some resources... Uh, concerning the book of Revelation, where you can study it, whether you can find out is it the word of God or not, uh, and scholarship and all that on on um, on uh, on this topic of, of the book of Revelation, okay? And also I'll put some resources under this video about dealing with doubts, how to deal with doubts. If if you have got real doubts, pastoral doubts about the Bible doubts in your own walk with God you're struggling with doubts just um, email me 
I'll put my email um, and just email me your questions, your doubts, and I'll deal with them as a pastor and, you know, I'll help you. If you're living in Manchester and you're struggling with doubts and you need to uh, deal with them and you need help dealing with them, just, you know, just give me a ring. I'll put my phone number. Just give me a ring. We can meet up in Manchester, sit down. I can work through your doubts with you and help you through those issues if you want, okay? All right, so there's going to be a lot of stuff there. Anyway, let's just have a look at the book of Revelation. Um, if anybody wants a Bible study in the book of Revelation, let me know. We can do a live Bible study on it. Anyhow, John's return from exile after the Domitian, Domitian death. At this time, the apostle and evangelist John, the one whom Jesus loved, was still living in Asia. And governing the churches of the region, having returned after the death of Domitian from his exile on the island, and that he was still alive at the time may be established by the testimony of two witnesses. Irenaeus, in the second book of, the, of his work against heresies, writes as follows, And all the elders that are associated with John, the disciple of the Lord, in Asia, bear witness that John de delivered it to them, for he remained among them until the time of Trajan. And in the third book of the same work, he attests the same thing in the following words, But the church in Ephesus also which was founded by Paul, and where John remained until the time of Trajan, is a faithful witness of the apostolic tr tradition. Clement likewise indicates the time. Eusebus Church History, uh, 3251-5, translation, Arthur Cushman's uh, Megarift in the Nicene and Post-19 Fathers, Nicene Fathers, Second Series, Philip Chaff, Volume 1. Um, goes over the uh, sort of outline of it then it's the historical background this is a scholar called Dale F. Leschet um, I, might, I might not agree with everything he says but uh, I'm sure he's I don't, I don't use any rubbish stuff so I'm sure he's okay um So I'll see if I can get some of his lectures for you, or, or some lectures on the book of Revelation for you. Revelation claims to have been written by a person called John, Revelations 1.1, 1, 1, um, 1, 1.4, 1, 1.9, and 2.2.8. It was apparently well known to his readers. The early church fathers widely held he was the Apostle John, but some sort of scholars argue on the basis of ambiguous statement by Papias, Eusebius, uh, ecclesiastical he history 339 that he is a different John the Elder John 2 uh, 2 John 1 and 3 John 1 still others hold that he is an unknown John there is no agreement among those who distinguish them between different Johns as to which one wrote which of the John and compositions although tradition strongly attributes the four gospel three epistles and apocalypse all to the Apostle John the recipients of this letter were, written, were seven churches in Asia Minor, over which John exercised oversight. The church at Ephesus, Cimmeria, Pergamon, uh, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and La Laodicea, Revelations 1 4, verse 11, 1 4 and 11, um, Revelation chapter 11, chapter 2, excuse me, verse 1. <coughs> Old chapter and Revelations chapter three verse twenty two. John wrote John wrote to encourage and strengthen these churches for the persecution that they were undergoing or about to experience by enfolding to them his visions of God's final victory over evil. Revelation contains features of three different genres Apocalypse Revelation one verse one, Epistle Revelation one four and prophecy revelation 1 3 grammatically it is rougher than the fourth gospel or the John 9 epistles but it's still closer to these writings stylistically the end than any other body of literature it was more likely written under the persecution of Domitian in 81 to 96 AD who instituted emperor worship than during the earlier persecutions of Nero 1568 John probably wrote from the island of Patmos where he was exiled because of his witness for Christ, Revelation 1 9. 
but he could possibly have worked his draft into final literary form at some other place shortly after his release, AD 96. By this time, the age apostle was nearing the end of his life. The central message of the mysterious book of Revelation. Revelation is a mysterious and intriguing book. When a slain lamb, it was a lion, breaks its seal, and seven angels blast upon their trumpets and pour out golden bulls of plagues and pestilence upon the earth and flashes of lightning and peals of thunder. Mounted horsemen prepare a charge forth into battle. An old red dragon engages the forces of heaven in mortal combat until an archangel throws him down to earth. A grotesque beast with horns and multiple heads emerges from the sea. Another beast comes out of the ground. Together they command the worship of the world and control its finance. Upon the first beast rides a drunken woman who has amassed the world's wealth by prostituting herself with the kings of the earth. But suddenly the beast turns upon her and devastates her worldwide commercial empire in a single hour. And as the smoke from her immoral city extends to heaven, the saints rejoice confidently and deliberately. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords mounts his white horse for war. All the vultures flock together to feast upon the corpse of those slain in the decisive victory over the beast. A new city made of pure gold slowly descends to earth from heaven, and the Lamb, resplendent in glory, takes up his residence in the middle of the city, and righteousness reigns forever. What are we to make of this obscure book with all of its strange imagery? Revelation has been marked by such a variety of divergent interpretations that one might think it was purposely designed to conceal rather than reveal. Contrary to what its name suggests, one point, however, is abundantly clear. Throughout the book we find heaven and earth worshipping and singing praises to the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. We ought to join in their worship because Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords who will ultimately triumph over evil. So I'll just write that name down. Sorry about this. So what we'll do is write the guy's name down. Dale Dale Lech Lechert. Uh, Four of the New Testament by Mentor. Mentor are by Christian Focus Publishers. They're a good publisher, so I'll put a link to the book, okay? So if, if anyone's interested in uh, some Bible studies in the book of Revelation, and wanting to go into the more scholarly aspects of why is the book of Revelation the word, part of the word of God? Let me know and I can do something on that one night. Maybe do a live study. Uh, if you're interested in live studies, keep your eye out. I will be doing some live Bible studies uh, on uh, links once a week. And uh, I'll announce more, more news about that later. Uh, excuse me, later on next week sometime. <coughs> so that's it. I'm going to pray. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to put a song on and just pray. Also, want to thank uh, a brother who sent me a link about an evolution guy. Uh, a guy who was an evolutionist, became a Christian. I'll also uh, put a link to that video under this as well. So I'm going to put a resources about resources about doubt, resources about studying the book of Revelation and this testimony about evolution and I'm going to put some of my links to some blogs and my website so that you can get down there um, and see what stuff I'm writing in the next few weeks alright alright tell you what we'll put a song on let's see what we can find It's been good to see you, it's good to talk, and uh... Excuse me.
do like this one is. Okay, we'll have a little prayer and then I'll finish off with the music. And it's good to see you. Please pray for me. Uh, pray that this table will continue to be used. Pray for the open air preaching. Uh, pray for some of the pastoral visits that I need to make. I've met people who need visiting, people who've got uh, problems that they, you know, they need support and encouragement and help. So I've got to go and visit them. Pray for this church plant, Piccadilly Gardens. Um, I think I know the right direction to go, so um, I'm thinking of meeting in the Arndale in the morning on a Sunday and in the evening on a Friday. So pray about whether that's the right thing. Um, there's definitely a big need for it, um, and I just want to get my hands dirty in helping people pastorally and just teaching them the word of God and uh, that's desperately needed so uh, so please pray about that pray that if it is the Lord's will that he gather I need I need at least a few about three or four people who are going to stick with me and just help me through that because um, you know you need a team um, so I just pray that others will catch the vision um, there's a few groups in Manchester but they're either extreme charismatic or extreme Calvinist and I don't think those are either good or nominal nominal Anglicanism really those are the three kind of groups and I just think there's a desperate need for just simple Bible teaching good shepherding and um, uh, missionary orientated so so pray, please pray for that. Pray that I can get out regularly. Pray I can get into the Word of God, studying it now. Uh, pray for more contacts. Um, pray for Bibles. I need more Bibles um, to, to put on the table. So pray that someone will donate some Bibles. Uh, pray for all the blogs that I've got. I've got a lot of blogs, especially to Muslims. And uh, pray for the atheists. Uh, I've done I've done a lot of stuff with the atheists some crazy stuff but just pray that in some way that God would use that even though some of it wasn't my best that it should have been um, pray that the atheists would come to know the Lord uh, pray for Samuel's Wimber Theological Seminary there's thousands of people using that ministry now um, and just pray for guidance about how to take that work forward um, and that's it really so if you've got any prayer requests, send them to me. Uh, email them to me and I'll pray. I won't mention your name in public, but I'll, I'll pray when I'm doing a video um, and stuff. So, yeah, so let's pray. Father, we just thank you for a lovely day today and we thank you for your goodness and love. I thank you for those who've watched this video tonight and I just pray that you'd encourage them. I pray if they don't know you, that they will come to know you, Lord, and trust in you. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to deal with our doubts, show us the answers that we need to know. Those who are doubting tonight, whatever it is, that we pray that we'd be able to help each other, and that we'd have a firm foundation in trusting you, Lord. Father, we pray for all the people in Manchester that have been reached today by the street preachers and the work that we've done and for all the work that's been done over the weeks and months and years in Manchester we pray that all that seed sown would yield eternal life that people would come to know you 
I pray for all the individual people that we talk to today, that you'd open their hearts to trust in you. We pray for those who are going through difficult times at the present time, that you would just bless them and encourage them, that you would take their burdens and carry them for them, Lord. And so, Father, we just thank you so much for today. And, Lord, I just pray for this new period of my life of Bible teaching online and, and writing, and I pray that that period would be a fruitful period uh, in the next couple of years, God willing. So, Lord, we just bring all these things to you. We thank you so much for your love and your patience with us, Lord. We pray that you would continue to build your church and strengthen it worldwide and strengthen it in our local areas where we all live. And, God, we thank you in his name for all your goodness and love. We give you the prayers and the glory in Jesus' name. Bless this video. May it be a blessing to people and a help in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I hope that was a blessing. I'll close with a song. And then when it comes near the end, I'll just do that. And I'll see you around. All right? Thank you.